Well, uh, most of you somehow, somewhere have China as a buyer of your products or of your components, or maybe they're in your supply chain somewhere. So what does the current trade war between China and the United States mean to you? Our guest today is Stanley Chow, author of Selling to China, a guide for small and medium-sized businesses. He is also the managing director of All In Consulting, which assists Western companies in their China business strategies. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Stanley. Yeah, thank you very much for having me today, sure. Dirk. Well, uh, before we get started talking about the current trade situation between China and the United States, why don't you give us kind of the 30-second, one-minute speech of what All In Consulting does. What do you guys do? Sure, sure. We're based uh, in Los Angeles, and uh, we help Western companies in their business strategies. Uh, we started in the... Uh, uh, early 2000s, and at that time, a lot of the projects were, were outsourcing. Uh, and it's kind of shifted now to where we're doing a lot of selling into China. So we're helping Western companies uh, establish sales offices, uh, manufacturing plants, uh, finding partners, and uh, doing market studies. So that's basically what we do. Okay. Well, you recently wrote an article for us titled, um, Make Some Tweaks in Your China Business Strategy. And I'm assuming that given today's uh, ongoing and still unresolved trade war with China, that a lot of companies are doing more than simply, uh, simply tweaking. Uh, but before we get into that, let's talk about China a bit. Um, I have a, something I pulled up from Forbes here. Um, Naeem Aslam, uh, chief market strategist uh, for Think Markets in London and a Forbes contributor, told Forbes uh, this quote, that if you need any evidence now that uh, the trade spat is impacting a country's economic health, then look no further than China trade. The lower export number, he was referring to uh, China, China's export numbers, the lower uh, export numbers mean lower jobs, which means another direct impact on the Chinese economy. Donald Trump can be pleased. His policies have brought China to its knees. So is there any truth in that? Uh, is this trade war really, from your perspective and your dealings, is it really impacting China? Is it having this impact of bringing China to its knees? Do they really notice all that much? Not really. <laughs> this, uh, I, I see this slowdown as a kind of a world uh, economic slowdown that would have happened re with or without Trump. Uh, Trump is just taking, taking advantage, advantage of it right, right now. Um, a lot of the slowdown has actually started or started before Trump. Um, you know, in my, in my business, um, we're mostly helping companies go to China. But a lot of our work now is actually helping companies kind of drift away from China. They're, they're not looking at um, buying uh, cheap components, um, raw materials. They're asking us to, to now look in Indonesia, Malaysia, other developing countries. So I, I've, I've been seeing this slowdown already for the for the past two, two, two years. So it's not totally uh, on Trump, but he's certainly taking advantage of the, uh, the current downturn. Okay, well, you, you, you say in your article that even though you fully expect China and the U.S. to come to some sort of agreement uh, on this, uh, that you still think that there is a possibility uh, I think in your words, you say a full-blown economic cold war breaking out during the next three to five years. Um, what does that look like? And when you say that, what do you mean? What does an economic cold war look like from your perspective? Okay. Um, it means China will have a, some sort of mandate saying that uh, they don't want to buy from the U.S., and it's going to uh, drift across the consumer base. Um, Chinese are very patriotic people, in, 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 in many ways, maybe more so than, than Americans, because it's such a uh, homo, homogeneous group of people, society. So you're going to have U.S. companies 
suffering in China. I believe in, in, in the next three to five years, you're going to see people not uh, going into Starbucks, not buying Nike shoes, um, not buying Tiffany jewelry, and not buying uh, Apple phones. And you're already starting to see that. Uh, some people are saying the it's because of the economic downturn that iPhones aren't selling well. I'm actually seeing now that a lot of Chinese consumers are making choices and saying, boy, America hates us. Why do I want to go out and buy an Apple phone? I'll buy a Samsung or a Huawei. Um, and speaking of Huawei, uh, you have the, uh, the current arrest of, right. the, of the CFO. What was, yeah. was kind of a black eye for, wasn't that kind of a black eye for China? Yes, it's seen as a black eye. It's, it's, it's seen as a, uh, they're, they're losing face right, okay. right now because of this arrest. And you're going to have a lot of this tit for tat. You know, Americans are going to go after Huawei now for uh, cyber espionage, IP theft. You're going to see the Chinese doing the same for American companies, uh, uh, General Motors, uh, Boeing, uh, Microsoft. Any major company that's doing business in there could be subject to this economic full-blown trade war that, that I'm predicting in the next three to five years. In other words, things are not going to get better. Um, they, on a temporary basis, you might see things kind of waning, getting better in the next year, but definitely in the next five years, I, I, I see things getting worse. Well, with, with, with that in mind then, what are you recommending to your clients, uh, I don't know, maybe short term or, or long term? What, what, what are your recommendations? Should they be staying in China? Should they be looking elsewhere? What are you telling them? Yeah. You definitely still want to stay in China. I've, I've uh, for the past 20, 25 years, um, I, I, I've told clients that China is the place to be. But the reasons you're in China are going to change. So in the 90s and early 2000s, you need, you need to be in China to outsource, to buy cheaper products, components. And then we, as we drift now to... Uh, to the past five, six years, you want to be in China because you want to sell to the consumer base there, to the 1.4 billion people. As, you, as we move forward now, not only do you want to be in China to serve 1.4 billion people, I, I'm predicting that you're going to have two uh, regional spheres of influence, two economic trading zones. Now, China is implementing its one road, one belt policy, where it's trying to, to develop a, a trading zone uh, for 70 countries. So you're going to have one zone where China is going to be the center, and it's going to encompass 70 to 100 countries. And you're going to have another zone, which is going to be uh, U.S. as the center, and that will encompass North America, South America, uh, Western Europe. So you need to be in China. You need to manufacture in China to serve China's sphere of influence. You won't be necessarily bringing those products you make back from China back to the U.S., which means you also are, are going to need a center of excellence, a manufacturing facility, maybe in the U.S., somewhere in North America, to handle that second sphere of influence. So it's still important to be in China. Okay. Um, you mentioned the the One Belt, One Road, and I, I believe there's also China uh, 2025. Right. So you, are you saying that both of those, uh, well, One Belt, One Road for sure, but maybe China 2025, those are going to open up opportunities for Western companies? Yes. Yes, because China doesn't want to rely on Western technology for uh, software, uh, robotics, uh, AI. They want to develop these products 
domestically. Which is the purpose of China 2025, I believe, right? Which is, that, yeah. that, that's exactly correct. They don't want to be importing Western technology. So what does a Western company have to do to, to participate in the Chinese market and that second sphere of influence? You have to turn yourself into a Chinese company. Um, so not only do you have a U.S. headquarters, but you're going to have to have you're going to have to have a Chinese headquarters with uh, a, a staff with Chinese employees, a Chinese CEO, and uh, you, you you will register yourself as a as oh, so a local company. So you're you're saying that a Western company, even under China 2025, a Western company might still supply those you know robotics and high-tech items to China as long as they're under some sort of Chinese CEO I mean they could be they could be a US company but they would need to have Chinese CEO Chinese leadership is that what you're saying that's that that's correct do, do, do you see Western companies the ones you deal with is that something that they're willing to swallow um, they are they are but 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 you have to approach it differently. You know, I I I I've always told told companies going into China because of the IP theft potential, technology transfer issues. You have to be very careful what your what technology you're going to deliver. Don't always bring your state your latest state of the art technology. Maybe bring your second generation, third generation line. I, I also do do predict in the next five years that IP protection is going to be modernized in China. Okay. That, that 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 is something that that they are trying trying to change because the Chinese realize if you want if you want to develop and build things in China, you're still going to have to tra attract Western companies to come to set up locally. Okay, and finally, um, last question here. Um, yeah. What do you, what kind of what kind of deal do you sure. think uh, this administration, the U.S. administration, and the Chinese are going to arrive at uh, in the short term here? I mean, uh, obviously, there's going to have to be some sort of compromise made. What do you see happening? I don't see a a whole lot happening uh, in. In, in March, but it's going to be enough to kind of wane this e economic trade war. Um, the Chinese are going to promise to buy more products. Uh, I think you're going to see some large uh, Boeing orders, Caterpillar, Deer uh, products being bought, more soybeans, more natural gas, which is going to cut down the uh, the uh, trade imbalance. They're also going to enact some some laws. They're they're talking about uh, a foreign investment uh, law right now, which is going to protect uh, foreign IP and it's going to stop um, uh, foreign companies from having to transfer technologies. So you're going to have a lot of these very general lip service type laws enacted. But it's not going to have any real core substance that, that a Western company can, can take and file a lawsuit in, in China. But it's going to be enough for Trump to say, look, I won. China are going to buy more stuff. They're, they're, they're going to allow foreign companies to go in without transferring te technologies. And we're going to be able to enforce the, uh, the IP theft. On, on the other side, I think Trump's going to relax. Uh, you're not going to see so much of this rhetoric on uh, Huawei. The tariffs will go back to its um, uh, pre-tariff war phases. Um, and in general, both presidents, both countries will, will come out happy, and they'll kick the can down the road again, saying we're going to continue our discussions uh, and have some more announcements in the next six months. But the real issue here is 
China just wants to get out of this temporary mess into 2020, and hopefully, uh, they're, they're hoping that, that, that Trump gets uh, outvoted, he won't be president, and then China can kind of go back to what they were doing beforehand. And Trump is, is doing this to, to, to just declare a win in March. And as he gets into 2020, he's worried about his presidential election. And China is not going to be in the forefront anymore. Okay. That's kind of how I see things playing out. All right. Okay. Well, uh, Stanley Chow, Managing Director of All In Consulting and author of Selling to China, a guide for small and medium-sized businesses. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, thank you for having me today. Okay. Yeah. Terrific. And you can find uh, Stanley's book, Selling to China, on Amazon. Of course, uh, his article, Make Some Tweaks in Your China Business Strategy, Ooh. appeared on Quality Digest this past Wednesday.